demands that we understand it and it demands that we understand it very very well um, and so these durus and these hadaqat of tafsir is recording sorry okay yeah sorry I had to stop my daughter from playing in the masjid hold on <laughs> so uh, so anyhow so on the one hand you know these these hadaqat are very important and they're good, but at the same time, I feel like sometimes it turns us into couch potatoes. So we just listen to a lecture about the Qur'an, and that is our getting closer to the Qur'an. Well, that's only one part of it. And the other parts of it that are equally, I would argue, even if not more important, are uh, you know, memorizing the Qur'an, uh, reciting the Qur'an every day, trying to make sure that you're reciting it in a way that's better and better. These are the this is the practical dimension of our relationship with the Qur'an. And so when somebody really wants to prepare for Ramadan very, very well, I mean the, the first basic piece of advice I would give you, I mean I'm talking to so many different kinds of people, excuse me, I'm talking to so many different kinds of people right now. Some of you are mothers, some of you are students, some of you are employees. You have different kinds of schedules and different kinds of obligations. So you have to figure this out, this piece of advice out for yourself, how it's going to work specifically. But making time to recite the Qur'an every day, like pick, put everything else down. And I'm not just talking about the Qur'an you've already memorized. I'm talking about picking a time in the day, preferably after one of the prayers, like after Fajr, or after Aisha, or good, good nice times, or after Maghrib even. And this is not after Ramadan starts, but this is from now. And just sitting with the Book of Allah and reciting. If you can't handle a lot, then at least a couple of pages. And you'll notice that you get lazy very quickly. Like you recite a little bit and you start yawning or you start feeling like I got to do something else. It's not the couch potato because you're actively doing it yourself. You're not just sitting back and listening and you can tune out or tune in. You actually actively have to put an effort into reciting the Quran. And this is really where your personal uh, litmus test is going to come to play. How much time really do I enjoy spending with this book? And if you don't get in the habit of reciting it regularly, the next step that I'm trying to advise you of, which is going to be to try and memorize it, that's never even going to start. That's, forget that road, you know. So the, the first thing is get into the habit of reciting the Qur'an every day. This is, I'm not saying this as a replacement of the lectures and the talks and this other stuff. I'm saying that, you know, uh, saying this as a basic practical starting point in your own personal journey with the Qur'an. And it's something that, um, the scholars among us, the speakers among us, those who don't know much at all about Arabic or Quran or Tafsir, all of them are in the same boat when it comes to this. This is something we equally have to give importance to. So just because I've been stu or trying to study at least the Quran for the last decade, doesn't mean that I'm exempt for having to recite the Quran, of, you know, a, a decent amount of, it, amount of it every single day. It doesn't make me exempt. It's something I need as much as you need and even my teachers need. It's not something that anybody will graduate beyond. That's the beauty of this book, that we're never past it. We can't just say, oh, I already recited that page. Oh, I already recited this surah. It doesn't work like that. And Ramadan is a great opportunity for instilling and reinforcing those good habits, inshallah ta'ala. So my first two bits of advice, get in the habit of reciting Quran regularly from now until the beginning of Ramadan, manageable amounts. You know, that's the other thing that I was mentioning in this khutbah of mine last week, is Ramadan comes and we go overboard, right? So there's a person who doesn't even pray. If they pray, maybe they pray uh, uh, at home. And then in Ramadan for 30 straight days, they come to the masjid and they're there for 8 or 20 taraweeh, exhausting themselves. Halfway into it, they can't even wait for Ramadan to be over. Like they can go back to normal again. This is unhealthy actually. I'm not saying you shouldn't make 20 taraweeh or 8 taraweeh. Please go ahead. But get into good habits that you can keep alive or bring to life before Ramadan starts and you can keep them alive after Ramadan is over. So yes, when Ramadan starts, recite a whole juz every day, two juz a day if you can. Go ahead. But if you can't handle that after Ramadan is done, then start with something far more manageable. What's, what's, what's manageable and sustainable is far better for you. You know, ma qalla wa kafa. What's little and is enough. What's little and is, is enough. You know, khayrul umuri adwa muha. Khayrul a'mal adwa muha. The best of the deeds are the ones that are the most constant. And the most constant deeds are the ones that are the most manageable. They're, not, they're the ones that you can, you wouldn't have to go out of your way to maintain. 
So first bit of advice, recite Quran regularly from now on every single day. My personal recommended time is after Fajr. It's a particularly peaceful time and an easy, it's, it's, uh, there's an enjoyment in the Quran and the barakah of it, you'll enjoy the rest of your day. The blessings of that, you'll feel the effects of it in, at your work, in school, in whatever you, you carry yourself doing, you're going to see the benefits of it. And that's one more point on the side that I wanted to make before I share with you the next bit of advice. And that is that we often don't realize the spiritual benefits of praying in the masjid, of reciting the Qur'an, of ibadah itself, active acts of worship, extra prayers, nawafil, Actually, you know, you guys will know the difference between a prayer that's just a hit and run, literally like you bang your head on the floor a couple of times and made sajda and got the salat out of the way, or you took your time and prayed peacefully. You will notice the difference not only in the prayer, but how you feel that day after the prayer. The day you make it to the masjid to pray fajr, the day you make it to the masjid to pray isha, you're gonna feel different. It's gonna, you're gonna be at a peace that you haven't enjoyed before. And you, you can, from your past experience, already testify to those differences. It does make, in fact, a difference. And those are the, the, these are some of the joys of Islam. One of the joys of our Iman is that we get to taste its fruits even in this life. You don't have to be an advanced scholar or a zahid of you know, some really high spiritual status to enjoy these things. Even if you have, you're not in the habit of regularly praying in the masjid or reciting a lot of Qur'an, you get started now, you'll start tasting the sweetness of it right away. It's not something you're gonna have to wait for. So I pray that all of you get to enjoy that sweetness and get in that beautiful habit, inshaAllah ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. 